Next, we'll talk about how in Renaissance Europe in particular, there was a huge shift in thinking away from the traditional view of an Earth-centered universe towards a Sun-centered universe. Exploring this topic is worth a lecture in itself, so I'll just pick out a few key discoveries to give you a flavor of how this process occurred. We'll start our story with this colorful character who is known to history as Tycho Brahe. He's well known for using dizzyingly expensive observatories and instruments to make painstakingly careful measurements of the stars and planets in the night sky. What were important about his observations were their accuracy. He used a lot of techniques that we use in astronomy to this day to ensure this. For example, he made his assistants make independent observations and only allowed them to share them once he was happy with the results. He also tried to quantify the accuracy of his measurements, give a quote for exactly how big the error on them was, and this turned out to be really useful. The task of interpreting this data fell to Kepler. He was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, and in fact, the task that he set himself was described as the greatest mathematical feat in the history of science by Einstein. Kepler was already a firm believer in the idea that the Earth, along with all of the other planets, moved around the Sun. So this is the orbit of the Earth here, and the Earth moves around this orbit. Outside the Earth's orbit, we then have the orbit of Mars. And Mars takes a little while longer to move around the Sun than the Earth does because it's further out. So what made Kepler's task so difficult is that he had to pick out the motion of Mars, the movement of Mars, the shape of Mars's orbit from the moving platform of the Earth. He had to account for the motion of the Earth before he could get to work on working out the shape of Mars's orbit here. Over many years, Kepler worked on this problem. He tried many, many different models. He tried to fit many shapes of orbit to the data. It was clear that none of the existing models fitted the data. The errors were just too big, much bigger than those that Tycho Brahe had calculated for his data. And every model that Kepler tried was outside those error bounds, including Kepler's own model. Finally, he hit on upon the idea of trying to fit an ellipse to the data, and this fitted perfectly. And the model that he came up with is that each of the planets moves around the sun in an orbit which is close to circular, but slightly elliptical. It's much more noticeable for Mars, which has a much more elliptical orbit. So Kepler had come up with a model which placed the sun at the center of the solar system. And over time, the accuracy of his model convinced people that this must be the real way that the planets move. Finally, we'll turn our attention to Galileo Galilei, who was an Italian investigator and teacher who revolutionized many areas of science. Galileo was a very plain speaker. He believed that his scientific investigations were of interest to all people. He wrote in several Italian dialects rather than writing in Latin most of the time. He was never afraid to challenge orthodox ideas. And perhaps it's no surprise that the authorities of his day were so troubled by him. Galileo was the first to make scientific observations of the night sky with a telescope. He built a telescope himself, which he based on a description that he heard from a traveling merchant who had seen one in Holland. He looked at the moon and he saw mountains and he turned the telescope towards Jupiter and saw something even more incredible. Over a series of nights, Galileo observed moons moving around the planet of Jupiter. This was unambiguous evidence that not everything in the universe can revolve around the Earth. Perhaps Galileo's most important legacy, though, was the work that he did on motion. Think about that feeling you get when you're on a train which is stopped in a station and another train in motion moves past. And just for an instant, you feel like you're moving yourself. This was Galileo's key insight. He realized there was no way to tell the difference between a situation in which you're moving and everything else is staying still compared with 
you staying still with everything around you moving. So finally, the problem of how we can be moving around the sun on the earth and not feel motion was resolved.